Greetings. This is Maharal. Maharal, thanks. Thanks for coming. All right, um, Max. Yes, I'm Max. Max yes. Uh -huh. mm, so yes. I just started studying the, the Tree of Life, uh, Sephiroth the Sephirot tree and um, I already figured out this sort of dimensional arrangement which is um, I think is different from what is commonly thought but basically it's it's based on lots of cubes yes uh -huh. basically two cubes put on each other and then added some uh, some um, sections of a cube um, so I'm I'm working on on DNA uh, resonance patterns specifically on the level of dinucleotides where two nucleotides are together at the structure between the nucleotides of um of um axial proton bonds axial hydrogen bonds and uh, i wonder if tree of life somehow is involved in that structure can you give any clues well i didn't you know that i was interested in the tree of life but i never really looked at it that way in a full way because it did not seem complete um, and it wasn't but these uh it can be uh misconstrued as uh part of the helix and i think that it is actually uh with the two it could be the AG, or it could be nucleotides. It could be the the bonding of these two boxes could be several different things. So, with the basics just being shown, I would think it would be nucleotides. But I'm wondering why the boxes are split. Um, that makes no sense to me. I would think that in order to create, do the created, creative uh, system, they would have to be full boxes. They, unless part of the essence of that box is missing, some kind of energy is missing or some kind of chemical or electronic pulse is missing. So I'm, I'm only seeing that it is incomplete. What have you seen about it? They could be stuck to the top of each other to make it complete. So it's, that problem, I think, is solvable. Oh, but I still, well, I still don't understand uh, how, how exactly does the tree of life, even if when they stuck them to the top of each other, many trees of life, how does it correspond to DNA? That that I didn't figure out yet. Uh, oh. Because in DNA we have like. Uh, hexagons, pentagons, and uh, a structure which are made of hexagons and pentagons. And the tree of life is more like uh, cubes. And um, I, I don't know how to combine cubes with hexagons. It's not that trivial. Maybe you need to do some some more dimensional transformations to, to convert one to another. Well, I believe what you're looking for is the how it moved from the square to the hexagon. Yeah. Huh? And so how it evolved from the, the square to the hexagon. That is, uh, when you unite, if you were to take a, a square and turn it to the side, you'd have an octagon if you put them over top of each other. But uh, if you take one of these half of us these half of these boxes and put it over top of the square then you have a hexagon does that make sense yeah I'm, i i mean yeah but uh, i i know what you're going you, to say obviously if you look on the cube from uh, from the diagonal point then you can see a hexagon but right. it has very little to do with uh, the shape of the hexagon in DNA. It's more like a, it's a true hexagon. It's uh, six atoms uh, connected into a benzol ring. So I don't know how it relates to the tree of life. No, I do not either. I have to be honest. If I were to look at that the way you are looking at it, 
which I did not do at that time because I was interested in other things. Uh, I was interested in that, of course, but there was other things that uh, took my attention away from it. But it was something that I did contemplate every now and then, when, especially when I was building the golem uh, to make it uh, basic like it was and to have life put into it, there, the tree of life would work as a, a somewhat of a basic. There's still a lot missing from it. But what you need is uh, a circuitry to that. What I found is I need a, a, a controllable circuitry. So um, that is what I was working with. Do you understand? Uh huh. Um, but with actual DNA, it is much more complex than that. So when I made the golem, it was very much with things that I knew what I was working with and not so much things that I did not understand. Uh-huh. Uh, now, um, the... Um... One of the ideas is that the tree of life is based on lots of spheres packed together. And um, possibly we can look at the spheres as cells. So when it packs lots of cells together, they might form uh, the structure which is the tree of life. I mean, they would form a structure within which, like they would form a flower of life. And then within that would be a tree of life embedded. But I don't understand how it relates to the DNA. Basically, it's, it's some other structure. Well, you have to understand that these are... The, the DNA speaks uh, uh, to the body in so many different ways. It's, it's set up to be a circuitry that is uh, so complex that it, it's one, one circuitry is uh, breathing, one circuitry is thinking, one circuitry is eye blinking, one circuitry is all these different things, as you know. And so what needs to happen when you're studying these things is you have to find a specific action that is not a regular action that is happening during the, the time that these things are working. And the circuitry is important. But the thing is, it would ha in order to do that, you need complex machinery. And it is so difficult to, to set up this machinery to do what it needs to do. I can see what it needs to do, but to set it up would be beyond me, probably. But I see how it would have to react, because it would have to respond. You would have to set it up to respond to activities that are not normal actions, like not breathing, not thinking, not eye movement, not this, but actual speaking. That would be an action that would be different in the movement of the energies through the DNA. So that would have to be, uh, you would have to be able to see that particular electronic, chemical, whatever response it is differently than the regular responses that are happening consistently through the DNA, the, you know what I mean. But I'm seeing that this is the way that people will start to, scientists will start to integrate their thought processes into what is going on with the certain energies and chemicals within the DNA. Now, things are set up in a very organized manner so that all things can be taken care of instantaneously, if pretty much. And that is an amazing thing on its own. But when they are out of sync with one another, that's another thing. You may be able to take DNA energies out of sync so that you can see the different, what changes in the activity of the body. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, these are just thoughts I'm having. So here's an idea. Uh, so the tree of life has uh, 10 main points or sephiroths, uh, spheres. Yes, spheres. it does. And um, they go from uh, 1 to 10 in frequencies. And the top one is like God frequency, and the bottom one is the root frequency of root chakra. And uh, when I put it on a 3D, 3D map, it goes not in a straight line, it goes in a zigzag line in 3D. Ding, 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 ding. And I assume these are all frequencies which are supported by DNA. So I'm looking for 10 frequencies of DNA. Ah, that is an interesting point. I like it. And the fact that they are not on a straight line, it means it's not, it's not simply frequencies, so not simply numbers. It is a frequency, a frequency plus, I assume, polarization of the, of the wave. You know, polarization in each plane, it uh, oscillates. And that shows, so in 3D Sephiroth, it would show different planes of oscillations. Right. Have you, what megahertz have you used? Uh, we're looking at 43 or 42.2 gigahertz as a, as a basic, uh, the basic frequency for, um, uh, for the, the base. DNA. Yeah. Yes, because 442 came into 42. 42.2. 42.2. It's uh -huh. funny that you would say that because I, I got 442 um, mm -hmm. megahertz. Not any decimal in there, just the full thing. But, um, and those numbers fit really, really, very, very well within those. But the thing is, I believe there you're going to find they're all going to be represented as uh, algorithms of, uh, or algorithms that will lead to the next algorithm, or uh, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, megahertz that will or double or triple or do something in a uh, an organized way. So once you find something that works, something that relates, then work with that pattern, try to find a pattern with that one uh, frequency so that you can find patterns with it. Uh, double it triple it, um, right, right. half size, quarter size, quarter right. uh, frequencies, a quarter in, in inversions, etc. I see that it will be, it has to have some kind of, of symmetry in its, in its wavelength because that's how it's built. But with the frequencies, it should be able to show you um, some kind of pattern with the frequencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the main reason I'm interested in, in, in that question is because it looks like um, I, DNA is the, the, key, uh, the key portal of converting the 3D vibrations into higher dimensional vibrations. Exactly. I think you have something there. I, I really do. Uh, I think that's a brilliant thought very, it's original from what they had been thinking before. And this is a good way to look at DNA because it is energy. It is all about energy and the movement of it. It's, it's absolutely that. It's so many other things though, but to define the energy movement would be a, such a, an amazing accomplishment. Another thought was that maybe Sephiroth works on a level of, on subatomic level, like we have uh, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and uh, and and carbon on, on uh, making the the basis of DNA. Yes. And under maybe within the atom there is a, a, a Sephiroth tree. 
Well, it, to study carbon base, you are car, we are carbon base uh, beings. Perhaps the clues come from that carbon base and the way that the uh, carbon is set up in the system and actually study what, how it's put together and see how that um, relates to DNA in some way. Because if it originated with the carbon uh, element, then it might have some clues to how it uh, advanced from that state. Yeah, maybe we should look separately on nitrogen structures and carbon structures within the DNA. Correct. Because it looks like, um, yeah, the reason I'm interested in subatomic events is because it looks like the the many of the waves uh, are not electromagnetic in in in, uh, no. in 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 a modern sense. Basically, uh, there is some uh, signal transmission which um, is independent on distance. So it looks like it goes through subspace on some somehow, and. Uh, no. And for yes. that, I think it should go through the through the nuclei of the atoms, not through the electrons, but through the nuclei. Correct. So, so the nuclei should be resonated. Mm. Yes, exactly. That is true. You, I think that you have many good starting points, and they have to be looked at very closely, because I think that they have something to do with expansion of those atoms because that's how it would have to relate to the creation of a new, uh, uh, a new entity around it would have to be, it augments itself in some way. So look for those augmentations, but first you have to know the actual, uh, the actual putting together of the element itself and the energy that's going through the element as it is. What, mm -hmm. what energies are running through the carbon? What energies are going through the nitrogen, the mm -hmm. hydrogen? What elements, what things, what frequencies do they respond to? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You have to I find the frequencies of these base elements and use them to test to see if they give you a, a shout out of where they're going, how they're reacting in the system. Perhaps if you find the right frequency for carbon or nitrogen or hydrogen, it will uh, show you its expansion into the system. Mm -hmm. Yep, and another idea was that uh, number 10 in DNA is pretty big. Uh, we are looking at the sequences and we can see that every 10th nucleotide um, has certain, but if you take every 10th nucleotide, there will be certain pattern within the t every 10. You shift the yes. phase to the next one, there will be a pattern within the next one. So it of looks course. like the DNA can be read not as a spiral, not, not one, one after another, but every 10th has to be read vertically. Correct. Well, what if you find the 10 and the one, then everything else would have to be in between. But if there is a correlation between the frequencies of one and 10, then you will know that there might be patterns that you can figure out from that. To be more precise, it would be one and 11 because 11 minus one is 10. So it's one, yeah, 11, right, 21 exactly. and so on, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So figure out what those, the highest and lowest frequencies are, and then everything will have to be within those. But I still believe there will be a pattern. I believe all of the, everything within the DNA has a pattern, and that once you figure out one of these patterns, you will be able to figure out many others because it uses only four different, and I can't nucleotides. remember. Nucleotides. Mm -hmm. Types yes. of nucleotides, yes. Yes. 
And so having used four different, which still works in numerous com combinations, but, but not always together. Some of them work on their own. Some of them work in pairs, some of them work in, in triads, and some of them work in quads. So you just have to figure that portion out. But that is, um, I have a thought that I can't even express. It's about, but this is what I want to, to ask you as well. There is information about the matrices that are coming forth. I think this can help you in your DNA work. I would like to talk to you about that sometime. The matrices in the universe go through you constantly, up and down, and you can hold on to portions of it. And if you want to understand something more uh, deeply, you can ask for those portions of the matrix that have that information in them to stick to you and become part of you. And you will be able to, it, it, when you understand how it works a little bit, uh, be able to manipulate information in your direction. Right. Oh, yes. Well, I must go. Oh, thank you for coming and thank you for the conversation. That was very inspirational. It was inspirational for me as well. Thank you. <sighs> Have a great day. You too. Thank you much.